word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, in this unique dispensation of the church age, Every believer has been called either to be an invisible hero or invisible villain. If you are not invisible hero, then eventually you will turn out to be invisible villain by pure volition of your own freedom. God doesn't indulge you or force you to study and to learn the word of the Lord. Neither God doesn't give you an opportunity to force you to catch hold of your collar and pull you down and tell you, learn Bible doctrine. No. God is a gentleman. He doesn't coerce you against your volition. He will never force you to compulsorily study and read. And our Lord says, if you have the fondness of me, the very precious truth in your soul concerning me, then you will definitely come to know the truth and the truth will set you free. But the problem today in our church age is many of the believers are turning out to become reversionists. They do not know the Christian moral degeneracy that is happening around and once again leading back to lay down into the basic fundamentals of Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, followed by Colossians 2, 16 through 21, telling, touch not, taste not, and handle not. Dear brethren, the things that we need to understand in a day-by-day -day process demands to know whether the past teacher, number one, he has the one of gift or not. Second Corinthians 11, 13 tells to us that this angel of light, that is what the devil will turn out to become like light, and it will send its own teachers. Are we becoming a, pra a trap for such kind of a teachers? Or are we really looking upon the word of the Lord as never before? Are we looking upon Bible doctrine and growing up in grace? Because there could be no doc there could be no nutrient that that the, that blood that the Holy Spirit can use if it is not the nutrient of Bible doctrine. So you may think I can be happy with my deeds, with my works, with my XYZ penance. No, it is Bible doctrine, Bible doctrine, Bible doctrine as the only nutrient that blood the Holy Spirit uses. And if it is not the Bible doctrine then take it granted you have already lost it and why are there so many people not able to understand the simple truth purely because they have not come to know and to realize the importance of Bible doctrine that's what it is the reality of the word has been absolutely nullified the reality of the truth is not at all been made known to you why? Because you are going out upon your own lust patterns of your old sin nature to be fulfilled rather than looking upon the word of the law. That's what it is happening, dear brethren. And that's what it is looking along or going along. You want to look upon your crusader arrogance. You want to tell that minister has done so many miracles or healings. I will follow him. And you want to say that minister has such kind of a huge money. Let me go and join his organization so that I can get some funds from him. What for you are looking exactly? You are looking for the word of the Lord or are you looking for XYZ trends for your belly to be satisfied? Does not our Lord reprimanded them? You come and follow me, not because of this, but you are following me because of your food. Didn't he reprimand the disciples? We have to be here for Christ, dear brethren, not for any other things, for his word. Men should come to learn truth from you. If you are a pastor teacher, the ultimate orientation, either you are a prophet or an apostle in the Old Testament or in the New Testament apostle, what was for them? For them it was doctrine to relate their mind about Christ and to explain. Even the Philip became an evangelist who was ordained to become to serve the tables. His work was to become an evangelist and he did it perfectly to that human. And what are we doing today? We are absolutely ignorant of the truth. We are absolutely negligent of Bible doctrine. Why do the people want to follow you? Because of your miracles, because of your healings, because of your crusades. Does not the Bible teach for us in John 4, 53 and 54 that these people follow me because of signs and miracles. They are still not aware, perceiving the reality of the world. The first great miracle which has done in Galilee stands record, turning. The water into wine. 
The second greatest miracle stands is this. By his word, he healed them. And with a great pain in his heart, you still want to follow the signs and miracles, but not my, but not the perception of the word. Or these gifts of miracles, healings were been done before the completion of canon of the scripture to tell to you to get oriented to God's word, to God's love, to God's reality. Now after the completion of canon, where you need to orient? You need to orient to Bible doctrine. That's as simple as that. Whether you believe it, take it, consider it or not, it is Bible doctrine. And many of the people rather becoming visible heroes or invisible heroes, they have become invisible villains. If you're not a hero, then you're a villain. If you're not a winner believer, then you're a loser believer. If you're not a man reaching to maximum glorification of Christ in your spiritual status quo, then you're going down, down towards reversionism. God has provided for you the grace to yield fruits, but you're yielding now thorns and tissues. In Hebrews 6, 6 to 8, we have the passage which explains to us very clearly. The soil which should yield the fruit, now it is yielding thorns and tissues, but the same sunlight, the same grace. The same what? Grace should reveal you the reality of your soul. How much Lord really loves you. Jesus Christ, my Lord, saved your soul, not your body. And I don't advocate to neglect your body as well. Your soul is important before Christ. Your soul has the conscious mentality, volition, emotion, norms and standards to be energized by the true mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through your activated human spirit, so that as a pastor teacher being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, can in return tell to your soul, and Lord God, the Holy Spirit, can transfer the doctrine to your spirit, to your soul, from gnosis to epinosis when you believe it. And if you ignore it, and if you reject it, what? Zero, zero, point zero, zero of growth. But the pastor teacher has done his work. He is not held accountable. It is you, upon your own life, you are being held accountable, dear brethren. And so many people are perishing, not having this reality of the word in their soul. No importance to doctrine, no importance to anything else. Three days of crusades, what does it yield for you as a pastor? Rather than raising money, rather than spending the innocent people money which has been given for you as an offering, into vain you don't require anything, you get anything or nothing in it. It is not at all required for you to spend your time. The pastor teacher work, the dignity of the clergy if you could ask, put him behind the bars. Deliver him during the morning message. Again, get back and put him behind the bars and give him the books to study and get back with the new message. Because again, evening he has one more sermon. That's what the duty and the dignity of a clergy should be. Steady, steady, steady and teach, steady and teach, steady and teach. Justify each and every word, whether it is worthy or not from the original languages, and whether does it relate to the spiritual life or not, and you go on for the perfection of your spiritual life or not. That is what the pastor teacher should tend you, should feed you, should take you to the point of considering the reality of the word more and more. But today the trends have been changed. Behind the bars they are putting the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to tell, you stay there, I will go and come to the entire market, running up and down to earn some money. Rather than putting your knees to the ground and asking to the Lord, Lord, give me thy information as I am readily prepared to understand thy word. Send me the right pastor teacher. This man spends time in the internet. This man looks upon the internet cafe so that he can get some foreigners to get his money done. This is what how the trends are going along in the pulpits, then what and how the people will definitely love the word of the Lord. Getting, spending hours together in the internet, in the cafe, to search this donor, to search that donor. Donor not for blood, but for money. Telling that I am from India, I am representing myself, so it's such and such. I was born an orphan. Even I'm taking care of the orphanage of the people over here. Provide me some money. 
and telling to some of the same denominational trends to the to the persons over there in the higher in charge. I have gone here to this place. I have baptized so many people. Look under the photographs of testimony and provide me some money. Is this the work of a pastor teacher? Why not the people will end up in reversionism? Rather than growing in the ultra super grace provision of this unique spiritual life, why will they not? Even those farmers who are sending the money, it would be better for them to send literature of Bible doctrine rather than money. Free of cost if they want. So that these people can get oriented to doctrine rather than money. They can orient the importance of Bible doctrine to their soul rather than the money. Rather than constructing churches which is no way the right term. You as a believer are a sanctuary in Christ. What do you require? You require now the knowledge of doctrine to cleanse out this temple. Not the money. Church will perish. It is not four pillars. You are a living sanctuary, dear brother. And you have been called to become a winner believer, not to lose them. We shall continue in the next step as it is super grace on virtualism. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was going to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will unlock us the things and challenge us so that Lord God Almighty can be glorified through our lives on this earth. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.